Okay, welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to take a look at a double pi bond example. That double pi bond will exist when you have a molecule like nitrogen, oh, not N3, N2. I thought about the three when I was thinking about a triple bond, but no, it's actually the N2 molecule. It's a nitrogen gas molecule. It, it comes about when you take two nitrogen atoms, you join them together, and you form a molecule like that with a triple bond, and there's the Lewis structure of that bond. Notice that each nitrogen still has one lone electron pair remaining. So how does a bond like that form, and what does it look like, and why are there pi bonds as well as the singular sigma bonds? So let's, let's see in just a moment. Uh, nitrogen has two electrons in the 1s orbital, has two electrons in the 2s orbital, but it only has three electrons in the 2p orbitals, which means there's only one electron in each, which means that nitrogen is very likely to form as many as three bonds. So how does that work? Well, since nitrogen has three p orbitals, it has a p orbital in the z direction, a p orbital in the y direction, and a p orbital in and out of the board in the x direction. So here we have two nitrogen atoms like that. And the two p orbitals that are sticking towards each other in the y direction, they will overlap. The single electron in the orbitals will share that space the, uh, for a significant amount of the time. And they will be in phase within that space, creating that negatively charged region, pulling the two nitrogens together. What about the other two p orbitals, the one in the z direction and the one in the x direction? Well, what happens is the one in the z direction uh, will come and bend towards like this and form a, well, a reshapen orbital, so to speak, in a way, joining the two orbitals together like that, forming a region where the two electrons can exist. So I'll draw one electron there and one electron there. So that would be one electron from this nitrogen and one electron from that nitrogen. And so we form these bonds like that around, shaped like that. And so this is a single pi bond, and that would be accomplished by joining the z, p, z orbitals together. But what about the p, y orbitals? Oh, no, they, we have those already. What about the p, x orbitals? They have a single electron in each nitrogen as well, and so they will want to form bonds, and they're going to form bonds by bending in this direction, one in front of the board, one behind the board. So how do I draw that? Well, not easily, but let me try. So I'm going to represent the x orbital bending over and forming a bond like this. And this would be the bond coming out of the board. And then we have the x orbital on the other side joining together like this and forming a bond behind the board. So I'll put an electron in each. And just to try and help illustrate what that looks like, I got my little magnets out here. And there you go. Here's the two nitrogen nuclei. We have the single sigma bond between the two, the pp sigma from the py orbitals joining together like that. And then we have... I guess I didn't use the same colors I used on the board, but here are the two z orbitals joining together above and below the molecule, and here we have the two px orbitals joining together in front and behind the molecule. So you can see what that looks like in 3D. And so the green part right here forms a single bond with two electrons. That would be one of the pi bonds, and the two yellow right here, the one sticking out this way and the one behind it like that, that forms another pi bond in front and behind the molecule, also joined by the two electrons that reside in there. And so you can see that is what a triple bond structure looks like, one sigma bond in the center with two pi bonds, one above, uh, above and below, and one in front and behind the molecule like that. These here represent the two lone electron pairs on each of the nitrogen. Those would then, of course, be located in the 2s orbital, and we're ignoring inside the 1s orbital electrons because they're down below at a lower energy level, which cannot be seen from this perspective. So there you go. That's what we call a double pi bond.